Hi, I'm Paul Perdue, and I am the infrastructure nerd. And I'm Mary Jo Boyd, a legal technologist. Last time we talked about the new reconciliation features in version 18 for both trust and for general ledger. And this time I want to dig even deeper and talk about a new feature and that is the importing of bank transactions. Ah, that's that thing that everyone's been asking us for mm, forever? Forever and ever. So we finally got it? We have got it. Can you show us how it works? I would love to. Okay. So today I'm going to continue our discussion on reconciliation and the new features that are available now in version 18. So last month we talked about the new reconciliation screens and how they look and all that. And this month we're going to continue that on and I'm going to talk about importing transactions. So we can download the file from our bank and we can save that with all the transactions. If your bank has that feature, um, I know our bank, I believe require it's a charge. And if you pay the fee or whatever, you can download this in that format that you need. Uh, some banks have that for free. It, you have to check with your local institution to find out how that works. But once you get that file downloaded, uh, then we can import that into General Ledger. Fairly simple. And you can also do that in Trust. So I'm going to talk about it in General Ledger first today. And then again, remember, these are exactly the same in Trust and uh, General Ledger. So if I show you one, it's going to be the same thing for the other. So there is a new icon here called the Bank Account Manager in General Ledger. And I like to just go and do everything right from here. And before we import bank transactions, I kind of touched on it at the very end of the webinar last month. And that was the account information screen. You still need to go into our chart. I'm sorry the chart of accounts screen. You still need to go into the chart of accounts. You still need to go into the bank accounts that you want to import transactions for. And you are going to have to go in and put in the bank info. So you will need to have that account number put in here for the ones that you want to download. That's how it's going to match that up. Now you can password protect it if you want, so you don't have to have that so everybody can see it. But that information does need to be used for that. So once that's set up, I'm going to go back out to my bank account manager. And I'm going to choose the account and I'm, you know, in this case, it looks like I've already imported some, but I'm going to show you the procedures. It'll just tell me zero imported because they're already there, but it looks like I have some in here. So I'm going to pick the bank account. I want to import the transactions from once I've got that file, I'm going to go ahead and save that file somewhere, either my STI directory or somewhere where I can access it. And I'm going to import bank transactions. And these are the formats that it has to be in, either an OFX file, a QBO file, or a QFX file format. Once you've got it in that format, one of those, and normally the banks, that is how they will download it. But just so you know, if they don't, these are the file formats that you can import. I'm going to just navigate out to my folder here. So let me go back out to this PC and get my folder. And I'm going to go, I'm just, I have saved this into um, my, I'm just going to get out here and do it. I've saved it into my STI directory. So I'm just going to go out here to my directory for STI. I'm in sample data. So I'm just going into that. And I've saved a file out here that is just called GLS uh, for November import file. And it's a .ofx file. So I'm going to go ahead and just select that file and open it. And of course, it says zero bank transactions were imported because I've already done this on a previous demo. So 23 duplicate bank transactions were rejected. So there were 23 transactions originally that I brought in. And this is going to prevent you from duplicating and bringing them in again, which is really good. You don't want to have all those entries brought in and make journal entries for things that you don't need. So this is what it's found. So now that those are in there, um, it will tell me that the import process is complete and would I like to delete the import file? Chances are you're going to say yes because you don't want that import file anymore. You just want the, the next time you download the transactions from the bank, which is probably going to be next month, you will set up a new file and you can just import that. Now, you may want to save those. And if you do, you just create a folder and just make sure that you name that something else and you would say no here. So whichever it is that you decide you can do. So now I can see here that I've got um, 23 unconfirmed transactions. So I've imported them, but now it wants me to confirm them and make sure that they match up to things that I've already got in General Ledger. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm. And when I click on that, it's got two deposits that are unmatched. It couldn't match those up to something that I had already in the General Ledger. So I'll need to work on that and figure out what is going on. And I'm going to have to match that. The ones over here that were matched that it could find in General Ledger 
are already checked off. So when I get into my reconciliation, these will already be marked as cleared because it was able to find, oh, here's this deposit, here's that withdrawal, here's that check. It could find all of those entries that were already in there. Once I've done that and I make sure that those are all correct, then I can just confirm those and I can just make sure that, yes, that is right, that is right, and so on. If it's not right, if I'm looking through this, I can unmatch it and say, no, I don't want that matched up with that. I want to edit it to something else or whatever that may be. But you've got complete control over here at this point in time and you can confirm that. And over here with the unmatched, um, these ones I can look at and figure out, well, why is this direct deposit not in there? It's seeing this and it can't find that entry and figure out why that is. And then I can either create the entry that I need to match up to it, or I can find out if this was a different amount. Did something happen that this is different, that my deposit says one thing and it, this thinks it's another. This can happen um, with credit cards. Uh, if you have a credit card company that is automatically withdrawing your transaction fees at the time of the entry of that it's being processed. Some companies are going to do that all in one month and you're going to get a separate charge. Some companies, every transaction, they're taking off their, their percent. And so what you deposited, you know, for the client, let's say that the payment was a thousand dollars and it came over into general ledger as a thousand dollar payment, but the bank sees it as a deposit of a thousand dollars minus whatever those transaction fees are those things aren't going to match because you haven't modified your journal entry to reflect those credit card processing fees. So that would be a prime example of why that might not be matched on a deposit. Or maybe you created a created a deposit slip, but you're missing a different deposit and it wasn't exactly the same. Whatever the reason is, there could be something out there that it's not matched and you're going to want to go fix that. And then you can go in and confirm those transactions. Once they're confirmed, I'm just going to confirm these. And um, I'm going to confirm all 21 of these. It tells me right here that it's going to mark them cleared and it will automatically be selected. It already had that check mark for me on the next reconciliation. So I'm going to go ahead and just say yes, yes, definitely confirm those. I would go back and I would fix these, figure out why it can't find them, create the entry or fix it. And then I would um, confirm those as well. And then when I go into my reconciliation, and I'm just going to leave those, those two out there, the unmatched for now, just to show you that when I go into my reconciliation now and I go to do this particular account, oops, let me pick my account number one. And I'm just going to put in that it's the same right now because I don't know what my balance is going to be at the end. Um, and I'm just going to say, okay. And so now, um, of course, that's got a different amount. There we go. So those entries that I had checked, the 21 that I had imported, they're already going to be checked off and ready for me to um, finish up. And then I can go ahead and make all the other entries that I need to do or whatever it is that I have to do to get that reconciled. So super fast, easy way. This feature has been available forever that you can download bank transactions. It just hasn't been available to import those into our software. And now it is, which is huge, 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 huge time saver. So again, trust, same thing. If I go into trust, there is also a bank account manager. Again, you'll need to go into your bank account. So if we go into our setup screen into the bank accounts, we are going to have to put in that account number for that. Oops, I keep forgetting to select my bank account today. So there's bank account number one. You have to make sure that you've got this account number in there. And once you've got that, then that lets you go ahead and up, uh, download those and import them in. So I'm going to go back over here to my uh, trust accounts, go to bank account manager. Same thing. I'm going to go into bank account number one. Again, I've already imported these, but if I were to hit import transactions, you navigate out to where I've got that file and I'm going to open it. And now it's going to tell me six duplicates because I've already done this. Um, and then I'm going to just leave my file there. And then I'm going to confirm the transactions. So again, I've got two unmatched deposits. So I'd have to figure out why I have that. And then I've got four of my entries here that are um, matched and I can confirm. So I'll confirm those four. And then I'm going to go back out to my unmatched. I would probably just open that up and try to see what is going on with this reference. Why can't it find it? You know, those kinds of things. Once I've confirmed it and I do get those matched up, then I would go ahead and confirm those. And I'm back in business and I can go ahead to my reconciliation. Those items will be checked off and they'll be ready to go. So hopefully this makes this 
process of our new reconciliation features even more streamlined for you so that this can speed up that process that is so tedious at the end of every month, right? So enjoy. I hope that helps a lot. And we'll talk to you next month. So there you have it. Importing bank transaction, the long awaited feature that we now have. And that's just one more way we can help you to worry less and practice more.